welcome back to another Tyria training. Uh, today is going to be the start of a bit of a series um, for the next few weeks. So we're going to talk about like supportive equipment uh, for lifting weights. Yeah. So that's going to be like straps, knee sleeves, belts, wrist straps. Uh, and we're just going to take one of those every episode and just talk about it a small bit more in depth. Uh, so we've obviously done some reviews on a few different pieces of equipment. They're on the YouTube channel, so like we've done the review of a few different kind of weightlifting shoes. We've done a review of uh, the different kind of popular straps that are on the market at the moment. And today we're going to talk about um, knee support. So knee sleeves, we'll chat a small bit on knee wraps as well. Um, but yeah, do you want to kick off on knee sleeves? So basically what we have is we need to know what we want to wear, who's going to wear them and when should they wear them. So what we have for knee support is we have the absolute minimal, which provides absolutely no elastic rebound. So you would have something like, for example, the hook grip Chinese knee sleeves are very, very thin knee sleeves. They provide very, very little. They're a mil or two thick, probably two mils thick. Um, there's cloth material. They're in no way designed for any way rebound. So it's just for heat purposes only. And we'll get to that in a second. Then we'll move on to five mil knee sleeves and seven mil knee sleeves are the most common thickness. So that would be you know, SBD would have seven mil knee sleeves. Um, you can get some, you know, like stronger, what's Mark Bell's companies? So, um, super training. Yeah. They'd have like five mil, seven mil. Crossfitters will load them from like rock tape knee sleeves. So they'll have two different kind of knee sleeves. So obviously seven mil are a little bit thicker and then they are a more elastic rebound at the bottom. So it's like an extra layer of muscle essentially at the bottom of a squat compared to, for example, the five mil or below the five mil. Then we do have those warm knee sleeves. Ray-Ban, I think, are typically very, very, like, lax in terms of, like, actual support. So they're the more of a warmth again that we got. And then finally, on that kind of spectrum, we have ultra-tight, long, thick, elastic wraps. So that'll be, like, you know, you would see powerlifters wearing, so we talked about wrapped and raw divisions. The reason they are wrapped and raw is essentially because they do provide a lot more. So with our knee sleeves, we have something like five or seven mil we're limited to that amount of kind of elasticity for the lift. And as years go by, they might get a little bit less or a little bit more lax, but ultimately they're the same amount of support and they provide the same amount of rebound at the bottom of the squat. However, with wraps, it's essentially, you just go as tight as you can possibly go or tolerate. And then that provides yeah. you with more rebound at the bottom. So, you know, wraps as much as you can go as tight as you can get it. And that is kind of, they're then up to kind of very particular needs, very special needs, you know? So most wraps would be, almost exclusively for rebound at the bottom so it wouldn't yeah. be for any sports or warm purposes yeah i think you need to look at like so obviously there's different gradients of how much support you get how much percentage points that will add to your one rm squat or your five rm squat at the end of the day i think the important thing you need to look at here is like what group do you fall within right so are you the power lifter who's competing and wants an extra three or an extra seven or eight percent on your squat then are you going to go from knee sleeves to wraps or are you like the general athlete who's training in a gym wants to get a heavier squat but doesn't want to have to have two people to help him wrap his knees so we're going to talk about three kind of groups here today right so we're going to talk about general athletes who are like field sports players uh track and field athletes we're going to talk about crossfitters and then we're going to talk about weightlifters um i think most <coughs> of the time powerlifters are going to have this in some way dialed in well, or else they're going to be in a competition that's dictating what they're allowed to wear. So for the um, for our general athletes, almost exclusively, we would put them on the minimal amount of wraps or supports or minimal amount of uh, supports equipment in terms of knee sleeves. So it'll either be absolutely nothing at all, so no knee sleeves or no knee wraps. Uh, definitely no knee wraps, almost never any knee wraps for yeah. athletes. So like fighters, pitch players, uh uh, track and field athletes like you'll be putting them ideally without any kind of support a uh, little bit of warmth wraps um you know quote unquote for those so like the those kind of thin hook grip ones we talked about for example that would be for our fighters then our weightlifters essentially fall on that spectrum of um anywhere so it could be anywhere from absolutely nothing all the way up to wraps so that's what's legal in competition for our weightlifters so you could have incredibly tight wraps so powerlifting wraps if you feel like you can justify them for your technique and then we have a uh, somewhere you know spd knee sleeves like spd came out with weightlifting knee sleeves recently or then ray bands you know for our general gym goers then it's kind of a matter of what are your goals yeah so who are you in the gym you know what is your goal in the gym is your goal health and fitness in the long run 
ultimately then we we're either looking again at minimal or very little so a little bit of again quote unquote warmth so do they really provide warmth and is there benefit from that that's the remains to be seen i suppose but that would be kind of the category you put yourself in then if you're just general strength training um if you are defining your goals i suppose yeah i think for general strength training right and you can put like weightlifters powerlifters gym rats all into this kind of grouping right i think there comes a point where you just need to realize like i'm wearing knee sleeves i will get an advantage from wearing knee sleeves and look if i'm gonna wear something it should probably be an spd or it should probably be like a seven mil that i'm gonna get something out of right so the field athletes as girth was saying minimal support is very good because when they're competing in their sport and they're going under huge amounts of force they won't have the support there for them right so they're just trying to build stability they're using the squat to build stability and strength and they don't really worry about the top end number whereas if you're like somebody who wants to squat 200 kilos 250 kilos 100 kilos whatever it is there comes a point i think if you're squatting more than double body weight and you want to wear a pair of knee sleeves you should probably just wear the pair of knee sleeves that gives you the best advantage yeah you know like it's it's not that much like you're getting an advantage from it anyway just find the pair that you prefer so then if we look at our powerlifters then ultimately it comes down to who are you in the powerlifting world are you you know fully raw uh, sometimes that includes you know knee sleeves knee wraps uh, then it could be all the way up to like the tightest wraps you can possibly get whereas i think the ipf have a rule where the knee sleeves you put on have to be put on by yourself you can't put them on with any assistance mechanical or with yeah. someone else like so you have to put them put on yourself uh, kind of an arbitrary rule but it gets the point across that you can't have ultra tight wraps or knee sleeves so the last group then is crossfitters right and crossfitters are like all over the scale because they have heavy lifts they have light lifts they have low volume they have high volume and I think they are a group of people that are definitely going to have to look at knee sleeves. They look at all kinds of support and all kinds of like enhancements in every area. Yeah. Uh, so they're definitely a group that are going to get something from squatting. But we need to make sure they're not missing out on stimulus by using a certain piece of equipment. So moving on to when does each one of these groups wear these particular pieces of equipment? Okay. So if we started back again with our kind of general gym goers or our kind of real athletes essentially in you know, our track and field or if us or fighters or fish players or whatever it kind of then depends on your very specific goals but usually when you're in this kind of initial group when you wear them so is kind of in some ways it's up to you but then it's ultimately all based on your goals and your particular strengths and weaknesses most often so crossers will kind of fit into this group as well when you wear these pieces of equipment almost exclusively depends on um like what you're doing in the gym so if you're doing benches, obviously you don't wear your knee sleeves or your knee wraps, you know. But if you are trying to increase your your one RM squat or you're trying to, uh, you know, push your front squat or, or, you know, kind of just going for absolute strength, this is a good time to wear your knee sleeves or your knee wraps, okay. But preferably knee sleeves are a little bit less. Uh, when you wear them either is if it's for heat, you know, you wear them initially when you're just warming up your squats so before you put any weight on the bar. If you're wearing a little bit thicker, so something before some kind of sports, ideally you do a few sets first. And then you put on your knee sleeves and you work all the way up to your top sets with your knee sleeves on. So you can either bracket this down then again into separate places your, of your, your training cycle. So you can spend a couple of weeks without them and then move on as you get to heavier weights. You can add in your, uh, your knee wraps, your, your, knee, your knee belts, or your knee belts. <laughs> you add in your knee sleeves. Um, yeah, definitely. I think for, for weightlifters, for all athletes, right? If you take the off-season player, right? And they have two months, hopefully they have three months to do a bit of training in. Uh, if they're just looking at squats, right? So what they'll be using the, the sleeves for. I think in their first few weeks, they're going to be in an on-ramping phase. The volume will be very, very high. The weights will more than likely be low. I would just say stay away from your knee sleeves, right? You're going to get all the skill acquisition that you're going to need. You're going to build up volume and capacity and you'll strengthen up those joints. Then when you start tapering down the volume and your weights start to go up, so maybe the last five, six, eight weeks of the program, you can start using a knee sleeve. And then I would say for most athletes, off season, they just don't wear them. Yeah. Um, I think then for weightlifters, it, it can kind of mirror the same thing. Like if you're in a prep phase, what Owen did now, you probably don't need knee sleeves when you're squatting. Like, are you wearing them now? No, I never wear them. Yeah. Uh, but like, you don't need them. You can build all your volume, your sets of 12s, 8s, 10s, whatever it is can all be done without knee sleeves you know they're usually not that that fatigue or they're usually not that difficult in terms of intensity they might be fatiguing 
uh, but it's no harm for you to get all that practice done without the sleeves and then when shit gets a bit more serious you can start pulling your sleeves on so that's the same again with our powerlifters so our powerlifters are always looking for absolute strength gains so you know throughout the year you're moving through particular periods of training so you're going through your prep phases your uh, peaking phases in your like your deload phases or transition phases so you'll always be moving through one of these phases and it's recommended we would think that you spend a certain period of time each year in one of these phases without protective equipment or not protective equipment uh, protection like supportive equipment so or a less strong or, or like a, a weaker level of your support equipment so if you normally say for example you squat a part of there you're planning to squat in ultra tight wraps in your part of competition if you're 24 weeks away from your competition there is uh, absolutely no harm in going through like four or five weeks with no knee wraps at all no knee sleeves mm-hmm. nothing on your knees then another few three or four weeks five weeks maybe with some moderate maybe five seven mil knee sleeves and then as you move later on to your training you can split your time between some seven mil or for example five mil knee sleeves and then with your wraps but keep them split throughout the week so don't do all of your squats uh, exclusively with your knee wraps on okay so then our crossfitters again so we're just looking for something that's a little bit more versatile when you wear them so you wear them during your squats don't stress about it wear them during you know some of your assistance exercises for example but more often than not for all the groups here we're looking at someone who we want someone never to wear you never wear knee wraps for assistance exercises. Sometimes you can wear knee sleeves, but more soft than that, we recommend that you don't wear knee sleeves for assistance work. So you just do your assistance work naked, bare knees, nothing on your knees. Totally, just the underpants. Totally unprotected, no pants on. So like you, you do these, there's a reason for this. Like if you need your knee sleeves for your 50 kilo, 60 kilo lunges, you probably have a bigger issue there that you need yeah. to address. Uh, one thing before we get to weightlifters, when they should wear these, that you should never be wearing knee sleeves to cover up knee pain so absolutely never the only time it's excusable is on game day if you have knee pain for some reason and it helps them but you should never be training and using knee protective equipment that's covering up knee pain yeah i think the last thing i would say on that is like the reason like we probably need to just talk about this a little bit more is the reason you can't wear knee sleeves during accessory work is you miss out on that that stimulus like you, you miss out on the reason you're doing the, the accessory work if i'm doing like my Cossack squats or if I'm doing belt squats with knee sleeves on and I'm really trying to stimulate like quadriceps and I'm really trying to stimulate specific areas of the quadriceps I'm going to miss out on that because I'm getting support from the knee sleeve so what's the point in doing the accessory work probably just burning more calories and not getting the same stimulus from it at all so finally if we get the weightlifters we have a little bit of a, a nuanced category here okay so again special like special special category so when a weightlifter is squatting for most weight we recommend that you do some of your squats without knee sleeves or knee wraps whatever you prefer to wear in your olympic lifts right but when you're doing for absolute strength we recommend that you almost always wear them if you get more out of them so if you feel like you get more weight out of them and they don't cause you pain then we think for your absolute strength work so your assistance work just wear them if they get better so absolute weight will always benefit you more for weightlifting so if you can squat 250 kilos with knee sleeves on but you can only squat 230 kilos without them uh, we'd almost certainly recommend that that 250 mm. is going to get you a lot more value because realistically the knee sleeves and knee wraps that you're wearing aren't that strong you're mostly it like i would say 95 percent of it 90 percent of it is is your you know is your muscular tension it's not relying on uh, on the uh the physical capacity of your support equipment however there's a little caveat then when you're doing your olympic lifts for weightlifting right is ultimately right speed is ascent into the bottom position is one of the most important important factors in weightlifting so the faster you can get under in theory the most weight you can lift because you need to lift weight you can lift heavier weight slower and lower okay so the faster you get under the better okay so one of the issues with this is that when your muscles you need to relax instantly to get under a bar or you need to relax your legs essentially however the issue with this is obviously your knee sleeves or knee wraps are not connected to your cns unless you have some ultra advanced knee sleeves or knee wraps some baller wraps like you've got some biometric intrinsic like elon musk level wraps realistically they're not connected to your cns and they don't relax with you so they only relax they reduce your rate of uh, essentially speed under the bar just by a minor amount but any amount in weightlifting is important so we're looking at like milliseconds getting yeah. under the bar and milliseconds of bar speed so there's a good chance especially in the snatch that this can do two things so it can potentially make you slower underneath the bar and it can reduce the depth that you can get to high, however much literally two millimeters maybe a centimeter even but that centimeter can all be all the difference in terms of lifting yeah and i think like the important thing here is like it's not just the tension of the knee wrap or the knee sleeve around your knees that will restrict you it's also the proprioception so 
if I'm sitting down into a squat or if I'm dropping down and catching a snatch, once I feel that tension behind your knee and like that's what you feel, like you feel the tension behind your knee, your quads will automatically contract faster. So you, you have that feedback of like, it's like somebody stabbing you in the ass, like you're going to immediately feel it and you'll tense up that bit quicker. So it's not just the, like, even if you say, oh, I'm wearing really thin knee sleeves and it won't affect me that much, it's still going to affect you. Um, and the very last thing I'd say on this is like, there's a lot of bullshit and a lot of like, kind of one-upmanship that people like to say like, oh, I'm wearing knee sleeves, but I'm only wearing like the three mil ones. Yeah, yeah. Or, uh, yeah. oh, I'm wearing knee sleeves, but they're not, uh, they're not whatever. Yeah. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. I don't care. Gert doesn't care. Nobody else cares. So just do what works best for you. Yeah. Don't wear them for your accessory work mm -hmm. and don't cover up injuries with them. Yeah. But thanks for watching. Next week will be belts. Thank you.